we actually have from the latest episode of Kill Tony, guys. Give it up for Mike Hammock coming on the show. Hey, what's Let's, going on, guys? How you feeling, man? Good, good, man. I'm excited to uh, excited to have gotten on Kill Tony, which is obviously why the reason I'm here. Um, I miss Austin. Get out of here. <laughs> you said you had kids. He wasn't lying. Uh, this is the one with the sleep disorder that we uh, <laughs> that I referenced during the set. This is the one that doesn't sleep. Damn. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Apparently doesn't listen either. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going out to Vegas on Monday for Laugh After Dark, and then uh, just doing a bunch of shows around here. So yeah, things are good. Where are you in Denver right now? Uh, I live just south of Denver in the Springs. Okay, cool. Yeah, the pandemic. So, so you're keeping busy. Yeah, you, you had the um, Kill Tony, and now you're going off to Vegas. Was that an opportunity yeah. that Kill Tony got you? No, 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 no. This has been on for a while. I had just applied. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, they, they can come on the show if they want. <laughs> no, no, I don't want them on there. I try to even use their names on stage. Um, when you're older, when you're older. Yeah, uh, Kill Tony, uh, I got to do the other room, which was really cool. That was yes. that was sweet. I got to hop over, especially since I wasn't staying for Secret Show. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Hold on just, just a second. Hold you're on. good, man. You're good. <laughs> Getting reprimanded by dad. Yo, how many followers has he accumulated since the show? Probably a good amount. He made a good impression on but people. He already had a good amount, you think? Yeah, I was looking at his Facebook, and he made some reels, and the reels were doing great. He had some with like twenty six thousand views and stuff. And he's got his highlights. He's been on stage a bunch. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's smart with it. All right, all right, all right. I just got done from beating my kid, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Yeah, so um, what was I saying? I got to do the other room at Kill Tony, which was really cool because um, I couldn't stay for Secret Show, so they sent me over there, which was awesome. And, um, yeah, mostly just been uh, been hitting up my buddies, trying to figure out a time to come back and try to get on again, which will probably never happen. Because you're one for one right now, right? Dude, that was so the story of how I got up is crazy. So I um I know a couple of comics down there, Nikolai Roscoe, Luke Stam, um, both were Colorado comics before. Um so I flew down, I did a couple of Nikolai shows at the Alamo. They're great, you should check them out. Um, and then I just went over the night before, went to Creek in the Cave, Bucket Spots, pulled both of those, Banana Phone and the open mic. So everyone's doing buckets down there, huh? Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> well, Shit, I guess I used all my luck. Uh, probably won't get on. So wow. I went and signed up for the mothership. Got that. Wow. And I didn't realize you had to check in. So I like ran across the street to sign up for Kill Tony. And somebody was like, you got to check in. I ran back and I missed my spot. It was two minutes late. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Well, that so that is guys, cool. You were on fire, though. Getting pulled dude, from I'm everywhere. Egging. And they're like, no, I'm sorry. You can't be on. You know, we, we've replaced you already. So then I'm just chain smoking and drinking myself to death across the street with <laughs> Tony and uh fourth pull on that too so i got one for one across the board every show in austin damn you got to go back soon and go to the casino too yeah, but dude, um, that's why i'm going to vegas I'm going to vegas on monday hell yeah you're a lucky guy it should work out very well so did did you do the same set for all the uh, venues uh i mean kill tony was only a minute um yeah yeah two at the creek in the cave i switched it up because of people had literally just the prior show seen that so i uh -huh. had to do some stuff and then um yeah, and then I did pretty much the same at uh, when I was doing the um, the Alamo Draft House. Okay, so you did the um, you did the uh, murder suicide joke. That was pretty good. I like that one. <laughs> that has been my opener for like ten years. <laughs> I keep thinking I got to write a new opener, but it's like it's the best way to introduce my set. It's my favorite way to like. It's so quick and punchy. Uh, yeah, yes, I really love that joke. Yeah, that is a good. It's easy. It's simple. It's quick, and everybody can find it funny if you have a decent sense of humor and the way that your delivery is, is just like so jovial that it really makes that joke hit even harder. Thanks man. Yeah. 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 I've, I've been telling that one for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, Oh yeah. I really want to get into what you already kind of mentioned. You had a really good set. I, you must've been impressed Tony Hinchcliffe because he felt bad that you missed the open mic in the comedy mothership. And he immediately hooks you up. He says, let's escort this guy over to the other room so that Adam Egot can see his set. How did that go? That went pretty well. Um, I, I, it was, it was kind of bizarre. Like, you know, they take you through the club, which I'd never been in before. And then they kind of drop you in the room and the guy goes and talks to Adam real quick. Adam just kind of gave him a thumbs up. And then the dude in front of, I had to wait around for about two comics. The dude who, when I got in there had apparently like forgotten his jokes or something. He was literally <laughs> standing on there to silence. Like, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> yeah. 
running out the clock. It was so brutal to watch. Mm. Um, and then the next guy went up there and he did okay. He was kind of trying to get him back. And then I, I, I did pretty good. I didn't get any, you know, job offers from Adam or anything like that, but it was, uh, it was pretty, it felt pretty good. Well, at least you didn't good. have to follow any legends. Yeah. You had some guy who totally shit no, his pants up on yeah. stage and then another nobody. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, did you do the same, uh, murder suicide joke for Adam Egot? Yep. Opened up with that. Um, opened up with a couple of the classics. Like you get, I think what was it three or four minutes and, um, <clears throat> just kind of hit him with all my A material as quickly as I could. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, it went pretty good. So was that a show that competes with Kill Tony in the mothership at the same time? I don't know what it was. Was it a big crowd? If it was, yeah, I mean, it was full up, but it's a wow. small one. That's like, what, 120 people or something okay. like that. Um, so literally everyone who could not get into Kill Tony but still wanted to see the mothership. Maybe, yeah. I don't know if it's a showcase or an open mic or that was the continuation of the open mic. It was very strange because it was still going on. So I guess it would probably not be. But, uh, mm. but yeah, just there were a bunch of random comics. And where was Adam Egit? Is he like in a special chair that everyone can see? Is he like up in a sky box? Like, you actually just talk to a security camera. They just point and they say, that's Adam. And you just give him the, <laughs> the, uh, He's like, Saul. He's, uh, <laughs> he's just sitting in the back by one of the doors. Uh, he's got a clipboard just chilling back there. And he just uh, keeps a low profile. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about Adam Egan, but I remember he used to co-host the Norm McDonald show, and that's where I got to kind of know him, and he is really funny. Um, oh, yeah, and the secret show, you just missed out on that, unless you did, like, change your flights up, because I remember on the episode, hey, he was about to give you that I secret show. Would have, should have. My buddy Luke just got on this last week or two weeks ago, and he picked up the secret show and said it was great. Nice. He got up with the um when the Legion of Skanks were up. I'm sure he'll have a great clip. He's exactly their crowd. Oh wait, who's your buddy? Maybe we, have we seen his episode yet? Uh, no, I don't think it comes. I think it comes out next week or the week after. It's oh, cool. S T A A M. Nice. Have you ever been to Skankfest? No, I um I was just chatting up with uh with Ben Roy and Adam Kate Holland and all the guys from the Grolics. And he was he was talking it up, and I just I just didn't I forgot to sign up this year, so I didn't uh, didn't go. But I'd really like to. Yeah. Oh yeah, and something else I really want to talk to you about is you obviously knew Sam Talent, and that was just as it seemed like a weird relationship going on there, where he was kind of like trying to bully you a little bit, but you guys were definitely friends, and the energy was just a kind of a head scratcher for me. What is your Sam history is pride with Sam? And joy in Denver. Everyone in Denver knows and loves Sam. Sam has been around forever. Uh, he actually probably started maybe a year before or something around me. I started in uh, in Fort Collins, which is like an hour north of Denver. Um, and then a couple of years moved down. So he was kind of right as I was moving down to Denver, I think he was going out on the road with like Tim Dillon uh, or somebody had kind of picked him up. If anyone hasn't read Sam's book, he has kind of a, a novelization of that whole thing called Running the Light, which is really good. Yeah, I heard about that. So me and Sam have always known each other. I would never say we're like best friends or anything like that. We just haven't hung out that much. So what he said, I, which I heard as I was walking out, but after I got off stage about, uh, it's like, yeah, Mike got funny. I, uh, he hit me up for shows and I left him on red. I had, I didn't know. Yes. He was I just messaged him and I was just like, Hey, out of the blue, got any shows I can jump on, whatever. He never responded. So I was like, ah, he's busy. He's got, you know, probably, probably got a bunch of messages on his site or whatever, you know, didn't even, didn't even think about it. And then to have him say that was pretty fucking brutal. <laughs> yeah, we were talking to our other co-host who couldn't make it here t- today. And we're like, we got Mike Hammock on. And he, he literally goes, oh, the guy that Sam left on red. So that was a yep. big moment, man. That's a lot- <laughs> me. That's, that'll hurt for a while. And, um, and he had a quote He had a quote where he said, oh, you're funny now. He also yes, said that. Yeah. I mean, listen, I've always, I've always thought I was funny. But, man, have you, ever see- have you guys ever seen Sam perform? Yeah. Well, no, not I mean, live. Actually... I think I might have seen one of his YouTube specials and then his Kill Tony stuff. Dude, it's it's the the YouTube specials don't even do it justice to watch him. I've seen him do an hour on a dude's sweater in the front row. And really? Remember, wow. The dude is on a, just a totally different level compared People, to anyone I've ever seen. So if he didn't think I was funny for a long time, probably earned. Oh, really? Damn. Because you mean, seem like a really probably, funny guy. Talented. Yeah, everyone. Like, the way people talk about Sam, about the same age, I think uh, we've been doing about the same time. That dude is just head and shoulders above everybody. So he's been doing it twelve years, like you from Denver, something, something like that around there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. But the boy people talk about Sam is like he's an absolute savant. So yeah, I, I'd love to go see him live sometime. Uh, who yeah, are some the scripted who, stuff? Doesn't do it justice. Like his specials are great, but like if you watch him just riffing for an hour, it's unbelievable. 
who are some of your favorite comics uh, either that you watched growing up or right now? You know, it's wild. People always ask me this. And I got into comedy. I, I grew up in Colorado Springs. And Colorado Springs is a very, very conservative town. Um, so we had an old time radio show that would go for like an hour and a half every night. And it would play things like George Burns and Gracie Allen, Fibber Bingy and Molly, Red Skelton, Amos and Andy, all of these like Whoa. 1920s, 30s, 40s. Comedies. <laughs> that is old. Yeah. So you, that's, that's how I got introduced to comedy. It has not listen to a radio show. Dude, you just, sound like a 1920s comic too. You I really do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, it's just like listening to, to somebody do stand up, but there's like a story kind of wrapped around the jokes. Um, so that was like my introduction. And then I, I didn't kind of understand that you could do comedy for a long time until high school. Then you saw like Dane Cook kind of blew up and Nick Swartzen and kind of all, all the, the guys who are now in their 30s. You know, that's who the kind of the first introduction, Seinfeld, um, Jeff Foxworthy, those guys. Not enough people say Jeff Foxworthy. We were all influenced Dude, by Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah, we love Jeff. Jeff Foxworthy in middle school, I remember just rolling around the house. <laughs> whatever it was, but him like pooping on somebody's window out the car window. I mean, just incredible. Yeah, I actually saw him live. He did come to our hometown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then all the guys in the Blue Collar Comedy Tour and stuff like that. And then I... In college, I got into it. Like 23, I saw a friend of a friend do it. And I'm like, oh, I can do that. I didn't kind of realize that you just had to go do it somewhere. And uh, from there, obviously, you know, Bill Burr, Bill Maher, uh, John Stewart was a big one for me okay. growing up as well. You love political comedy. I did. I liked, <laughs> I liked a lot of politics uh, growing up now. Now I do a fair amount of it, but it's mostly kind of like the storytelling and stuff like you saw with the, the second bit on Kill Tony. Mm -hmm. Who are you voting for? Oh man, <laughs> I vote for RFK. Okay, all right. I cannot tell you how much I love RFK. He's pretty cool. And I live in a blue state, so it doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. I'm voting for RFK. <laughs> Yeah, you're wasting your vote, in other words. Yeah, yeah complete throwaway, but yeah. you got to do something. That's awesome, man. Uh, what else I got for you here? Oh yeah, I really liked your... um. Your pre-COVID mortgage joke, too. Just to uh, mention another joke that you said. That was a That's solid joke. That's my new joke. favorite. Yeah. I, 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 just, I wrote that just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I have a really slow writing process, and I, I, I can't write at all. I just have to, like, think of something. So that'll happen, like, once a month. I'll get, like, an idea for a joke. And now, at this point in my career, it's probably pretty good. But there was a long time when, like, it was a 50-50 shot or a 60-40 shot of it being good. So anytime I get one, I will tell that one nonstop for the next month and a half, and then I'll get the next one. And I'll move on to that. And I'm sure it gets better and better, and you punch it up and all that. So that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, how about the three-year-old? Has they slept through the night yet? Nope. Still no. The night. The 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 one-year-old is starting to show sleep problems too. So I'm probably fucked. Uh, it's something in that house. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah we've checked the radon we've checked everything Dude, the <laughs> amount of unsolicited medical advice i have gotten as a result of the kill Tony that's clip funny is out people are telling me my kid has a parasite people are telling me wow be medication recommendations uh, all in the comments on youtube yeah i mean just so people are just messaging me direct on instagram just like hey you know <laughs> You ever had your kid checked for worms? Like, you know, like just all this crazy shit. Damn. <laughs> the Colorado worms. Oh, yeah. How many followers have you gotten since your appearance? Uh, so I had, what, something like 8,000 and change, and now I'm up at 9,000 and change. I nice. think you got a nice thou. Solid. Yeah, some of the people we interview really don't get any bump at all, and then some people get like 37,000 overnight. It's wild. Oh, man, I was hoping for that, obviously. Um, yeah. But you know, like a nice, probably like a nice 10% boost, so that's that's pretty good. Do you watch Kill Tony a lot? Uh, I'd seen a couple of episodes, mainly because I'd had a few friends that had gotten on it. You know, I know the spiel. If there's like, you know, everyone's seen the Shane Gillis Trump bits and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I got a kid, I got a three year old and a one year old. If I'm gonna watch, them, <laughs> be pretty directed. There has to be a reason for it. Yeah. How was your birthday at the zoo? Uh, it was great. It was fucking awesome. I forgot. I <laughs> yeah. We know everything. We know everything. Yeah. Yeah. It was dope. Three year old is the perfect age to take kids to the zoo. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, that was great. Animals pretty active. Or are they sleeping? Oh, it was the best. Everyone was feeding them right at the time. And the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo has like this wild history of like. The tigers have all tasted human flesh. Like they, you, know, <laughs> you guys know the story about the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo? No. Oh. 
So it's built on the side of a mountain. Like the whole zoo is like to walk like uphill. So I don't know how long ago at this point, but somebody was like hiking down the mountain and thought they were going to sneak into the zoo. So they climbed over the fence. And I think they went into the tiger cage is what it was. Ugh. The tiger just got them. <laughs> and they all got a piece. That's, yeah, that's the story goes. So like anytime you go to the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo and you go to like the big cats and everything, they're always like really active when they get fed because uh, assume, supposedly. They're waiting they, for someone else to slip up. Yeah, they've gotten a person in there before. Oh, my God. That's cool. And they learned their lesson from Harambe. You can't just kill a zoo, zoo animal <laughs> for catching a guy lacking. He's the uh, reason we're in this situation. We need to go back to a pre-Harambe timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not punish the animal for being an animal. Well, there's a new Harambe. There's two new Harambes. There's Pesto the penguin, and there's Mudang the hippo. I've heard of Mudang. I've not heard of the penguin. So cute. Mudang the baby hippo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen Mudang. It's like overly violent. All of its siblings aren't violent. It's cute still, but a hippo is a violent creature. Yeah, they kill the most humans on the continent of Africa. That's what I always hear. Yeah, it's a pygmy hippo. So, like, they only grow to be, like, the size of a horse. Mm -hmm. Or, like, smaller. <laughs> it's got to be smaller or than smaller. a horse. Yeah, <laughs> Pygmy hippos aren't that big, but they're still mm -hmm. a hippo. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, viral animals, man, if they ever die, it's going to be bad. Yeah. yeah. He's, like, the biggest celebrity online right now. I see that hippo everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you got any good questions for our guy here? Not any great ones. You covering? You're like a <laughs> even quilt. subpar. You're like a nice quilt of mm -hmm. questions. Um, no, I really don't, man. I don't want to put on the spot like that. Oh, you're good. Oh God. And I just want to kind of bring back to the Adam Eget thing one more time. Do you get any kind of callback? You get any kind of contact no, information, no, phone number? Great. That would have been nice. No, no. Adam gave me a give me give me a thumbs up, and that was uh that was it. So next time, next time I'll go in a little bit more. Uh, a little more ready to rock for the secret show, and I'll stay down a little bit longer. Yes, hopefully you'll get back on, and the luck continues. And before we let you go, tell us a little bit more about your Las Vegas show. Like, are you headlining? What's going on over there? Uh, doing a festival called Laugh After Dark. Um, I believe it's at the Strat Theater, um, or the theater at the Strat, something like that. Um, just a couple of days in Vegas. Um, it starts this Monday, and I believe it goes to Thursday. All right. And uh, how long are you doing there? Like how long will you be up on stage? Oh, I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing 10 for my sets. Just two tens. What's the longest set you ever done? Oh, I've done an hour. I've headlined, uh, comedy works. Nice. And that's, that's a great club in, in Denver, right? Dude. Comedy works downtown Denver is the club. It a lot is, of people say it's the best in the country. It's my favorite. It's the best club I've ever done. It's low ceilings. It's a tight basement. It's probably 350 people. The staff is amazing. The owner, Wendy is incredible. Uh, yeah, if you guys ever get a chance to roll through, um, I want to go to Colorado. Yeah, hit up Tuesday nights. They have a new talent night, and you can pretty much, if you're from out of town, you can kind of just kind of walk in, ask for a spot, and they'll generally be pretty good about it. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, feel free to hit me up. Not everyone who's ever going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody give him medical advice. He, yeah. Will you leave us on red like Sam Talent, though? Come I on, be honest. Never, yeah, I would never. Yeah, how he could you do that with somebody? that gigantic warm hug that he gave me? Yeah, dude. He, when he got up, I was like, "Look at this guy. He's a monster." Sam is a monster. <laughs> By the got way, up. somebody pointed out to me. I don't remember doing this, but I want some credit. If you watch that clip, the catch I make on the notebook. It's amazing, Sam. Did you guys pick that? I it was nice. I done that. And yeah. I, back, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Can, <laughs> it goes unnoticed. Like we'll import that into the video because it is incredible. It is incredible. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, it seemed like you were just doing two things at once. You were in flow state as they call it. You were just seamless. You grabbed that thing. And then Tony, I don't know if you heard, he like takes full credit for that after it happens too. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. He's no. like, wow, I'm the best thrower ever. It's like, it was a good throw and a good catch though. I'm going to find it almost there. He shakes your hand. Oh, he's got it. When uh, when does it happen after the handshake, before the handshake? So it's right after uh, the hug. So okay. we go up. Yeah, there'll be a there. big hug. This big monster of a That's man, right. Sam Town. I'm leaving the stage. All right, audio. Oh, yeah, it's going to be right there after this. There he goes, one of those, too. No! Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice! See the arc I put on that? Run that back. Here he goes, one of those, too. Booyah. Damn, dude. And that's like one of those moments where you would have been embarrassed if you dropped it, but no need to be. Oh, but I ruined the whole thing. Dude, yeah. you nailed it. Was, uh, that was a lot of pressure. You get done, they put you back out on the street like you've just been in a car accident. Like, <laughs> like you just got off the bang bus. You're naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who was yeah, like, I guess I'll just go hang out with my buddies and just <laughs> wait for a bit. Like, 
it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's a wild experience. Um, uh, I highly recommend everybody go and keep signing up, keep doing it. Fuck yeah, yeah, and nothing crazy happened behind this uh, behind the scenes backstage. No, nothing was wild. You know, you're back there. The producer, you know, gives you the they they wand you. They take your watch. They take all you know all your shit. They they tell you don't touch the comics. Don't go near them. As soon as you touch the X, you get one minute left, and wow. then you just stand there for 15 seconds trying to get you know moisture in your mouth, Ugh. and then uh, then they just open it up and they push you out there. Yeah, you still got your contact. You got a big hug from Sam. Probably got some handshakes. Has he hit you back? No, no. But, have you, have uh, you sent a new message? message? You got to send a new maybe one. Maybe he has. Maybe he has. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't checked. Uh, you know. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> busy. You should leave him on red. Yeah. Leave that red dot there forever. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's that's not leaving him on red. That's just knowing he messaged you and not looking at it. Mm-hmm. Different things, different things. Well, well, it's cool you got to meet uh, John Lovett and hang out with... Uh, John at, Lovett, really? Yeah, I'm looking at these photos. Yeah, man. And uh, God damn it, can't think of his name. Deuce Bigelow himself. Uh, Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider, yeah. Schneider. Yeah. Duh, I'm an dude, Rob Schneider is the man. That dude, I've seen him do an hour and a half and just murder. Yeah, I like Rob. He he doesn't get a lot of respect from some people, but I like Rob a lot. I, do you, I mean, you kinda, a lot of these SNL guys, they're just kind of you know riding the, the name and the old SNL credit, whatever. That dude is legitimately fantastic funny that dude is like an incredibly good stand-up comic yeah i mean him and sandler really are some legends have you seen sandler's newest netflix special no i haven't seen it yet it's pretty good i, I like him as a stand-up he's underrated as a stand-up i really like his last two netflix specials are great i haven't seen yeah, the new one yet. I, I liked him in funny people and i remember i remember he was one of the comics i watched growing up too all the the guitar shit he used to do yeah the the, the prank yeah. phone calls and the guitar oh yeah I mean, even in his new stuff, the guitar stuff, or like even his non-guitar stuff, I like Phone Wallet Keys, man. I would Phone Wallet Keys is a banger. That's one of the songs he does on his latest special. <laughs> so he brings it back, Jesus. Well, Mike, we're not going to take too much of your time, but appreciate you coming on our show and answering a few questions. You're yeah. a class act. You can do Guys, nice thanks for you. having me. Um, if anyone saw The Kill Tony wants to follow me, it's the Mike Hammock on Instagram. Show and, uh, Yeah, guys, hit me up if you're in Denver. We, we got you right we here. Will. Show them, Kev. Show them the follow. Oh, show them. Yeah, we got your uh, body. About to follow you right now on Instagram. We always do this. We click the blue, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate yes. you. You have a See good ya. rest of your day, bro. You too. See you. All right, we did it. We got one of them. We're we one, one of two. Of He's a nice guy. He is nice. He sounds just like he did on the show. Classy fella. Good father. Great father. He looks, yeah. Yeah, you could tell. Mm -hmm. He only beat his kid for a couple seconds and then he got right back on with us. Another Mike with a great mustache right here. And how about we get out of here, man? I got a studio session to get ready for. It's time to get ready for that stew. He's mm -hmm. always working. Kevin's always cooking up something in the kitchen. Let me get a little bit of a, uh, of a little outro going. All right. And then I kept uh, hitting, the, I kept meaning to hit the applause. I kept hitting this button. You can do it. Which is funny because well, we're talking about Rob Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was my only thing to add, but yeah. That was good. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. It's a Rufus Du Soul DJ set by Mayan Warrior at Burning Man. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll just see you off with this. Maybe it'll drop soon. Have a good week. The Daddy's Baby Show. The Daddy's Baby Show. Love y'all. See you next Sunday. Stay classy.